This is Paul Mazurik, and for the next several minutes, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the Medtronic 5392 Dual Chamber Temporary External Pacemaker. The pacemaker box itself looks a little bit different from the 5388 that we've been using for a number of years. However, a lot of the features are very similar. We're going to go over some of the components right now. There is a competency associated with this device, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each competency component in greater detail. First, we're going to take a look at the device from top to bottom. At the top, you see a couple of buttons. In the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see the power button and you're also going to see the button that we use for emergency pacing. A little bit different from the other pacemaker where this button was actually on the bottom of the device. Looking at the upper screen, you have a area for rate, output for the atrium, and output for the ventricle, with a corresponding dial to adjust each one. At the bottom of the upper screen, you're going to see the mode of pacing, which you see right here. You'll also see the battery life, and then also an indication of whether or not the device is locked. So to lock or unlock the device, you'll use that button right there. Moving on down to the lower screen, you'll see a number of menus pop up and using the directional arrows you can scroll through to select one of the menus and to actually get into that menu area you'll use that green button there and to uh, change parameters you'll use this dial. This is your pause button, which will allow you to look at the patient's intrinsic cardiac rhythm for a period of 10 seconds. Here's a little bit more detailed overview of the 5392, and if you want to pause at this point to take a look at that and to review each of these components in a little bit greater detail, feel free to do so now. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving along. Changing batteries on the 5392 isn't dissimilar to the 5388. However, instead of a 9 volt battery, you're going to use double A batteries to change them out. And it's pretty self explanatory the direction they go. Just push the button on the bottom, open the port, and change the batteries out, and away you go. When you turn on the device using the green power button, it'll go through some pre operational checks and the default mode will be a dual chamber synchronous pacing mode or DDD. Prior to turning on the device make sure you have fresh batteries which should come with the pacemaker pack as well as attaching the cables, the appropriate cables for atrial and ventricular output. And remember that we have two different types of cables for either transvenous pacing, as shown here, or epicardial pacing, as shown here. In addition to that, it is a good idea to actually insert the wires, the transvenous or epicardial wires, to the cable prior to turning on the device. Prior to turning on the device, you are going to need to insert the output cable for either the atria and or ventricle, as well as epicardial wires or venous wires. Do this again prior to turning on the device. The A and V outputs are shown at the top of the device. The cable goes in one way and makes sure it locks into place. Next we're going to talk about pacing modes. And remember, there is a specific system that we use called the NBG codes, and it's a three-letter system 
The first letter is for the chamber paced, the second letter is for the chamber sensed, and the third letter is the response to sensing. Again, if you want to pause the video at this point, you can review this a little bit more in depth. In order to identify and change modes of pacing, it's important to understand where to find the mode of pacing that you are in and a couple of different ways in which you can change the mode. So the mode is always going to be in the upper screen and the lower left hand corner. In this instance, Dave has changed the mode from a DOO dual chamber to a VOO single chamber simply by taking the atrial output to zero. The other way to manipulate the modes or to change the modes is on the lower screen where you can go to the menu at the bottom of the screen and adjust or select which mode of pacing that you want to be in. In order to do this, it is important to understand the three letter identifiers associated with pacing that were discussed earlier in this presentation in order to utilize temporary pacing to your advantage. So now we're going to talk about adjusting the rate, the atrial, and or the ventricular output. And again, that's going to be using the upper screen menu system. Adjusting rate, atrial, and ventricular output are pretty straightforward. On the upper menu, there is an area for rate, atrial output and ventricular output with a corresponding dial. Turn the dial clockwise to increase and turn the dial counterclockwise to decrease. Remember to assess for capture by looking at your monitor screen as well as your patient's clinical response. In the event that you'll need to emergently pace, you'll do so in an asynchronous mode. The emergency pace button is at the top of the device and the defaults go to 80 pulses per minute and maximum atrial and ventricular output. Again, the mode is DOO, dual chamber pacing. On the lower menu screen, use the up and down arrows to scroll through the menus and the green arrow button to select the menu that you want to adjust. Adjust the settings with the dial. The menus that we typically would need to worry about for our purposes are the A and V sensitivity as well as the mode selection all the way at the bottom. Next we're going to talk a little bit about sensitivity. Sensitivity refers to the pacing device's ability to see what electrical activity is being generated by the patient's own heart rate to prevent any competition between the heart's intrinsic activity. This allows pacing only on a demand system when the intrinsic heart rate is too low. We set the millivolts of sensitivity on the pacer device to the lowest number so that it will see the smallest amount of electricity being produced by the heart. What we're going to do next is show you a little example of what we're talking about and how to adjust sensitivity and why. As you can see in this chart where sensitivity in millivolts is measured on the left, if we were to set our sensitivity in millivolts at 2.5, the pacer box is only sensing impulses generating greater than 2.5 millivolts, which you can see right here. When we lower the millivolt setting to 1.5 millivolts, thereby increasing the sensitivity on the pacing device, the pacer will sense the beats that elicit a smaller amount of millivolts and stop the pacer from pacing inappropriately. Remember, the lower the setting, the more sensitive the pacemaker is to intracardial signals. So therefore, if we decrease the sensitivity, we're actually increasing the millivolt and vice versa. As previously discussed, there may be a time where you will need to adjust either the atrial or ventricular sensitivity. That is easily done in the lower screen menu by selecting either the A or V sensitivity and then using the dial to adjust. 
remember that when you are increasing the sensitivity, the millivolts goes down. When you are decreasing the sensitivity, the millivolts go up. In order to power the device off, simply push the power button at the top right hand corner. There's going to be a prompt to say turn device off. You hit the green arrow button at the bottom menu and the device powers off. So I hope this provided a good overview for you when utilizing the Medtronic 5392 dual chamber temporary external pacemaker. This video will be placed on our Survival Flight Education YouTube channel so that you can access it at any time. Should you have any questions or need for further instruction related to this device, do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much.